G Gen Nation. Welcome to the theater room where we deep dive, we rewatch, and we watch new movies. We review them. We got Zuplex and Spartacus here. And this week, we are talking about the original Martin Lawrence and Will Smith movie before he slapped anybody in the face Bad Boys. We got classic Michael Bay isms. I have a long list of things I want to talk about. I want to mention, I should say. This is a movie from a different era. I'm excited to get into this. When was the last time you watched Bad Boys? <laughs> uh, the original one, it's been a few years. It's definitely been a few years since I watched the first one. I I tend to watch Bad Boys 2 at More. least once a year because yeah. I love that movie so much. But I forgot how good the first one really is. This is uh, Bad Boys 2 deserves to be in the conversation when everyone, so anyone brings up like sequels that were better than the original. Oh, 100%. Bad Boys 2. Uh, Bad Boys 2 blows Bad Boys 1 out of the water. There's honestly a very big difference in Michael Bay's directing style. This is his his movie directorial debut. This is Michael Bay's first full production movie. Before this, he was doing music videos. Before this, yeah, Bad Boys was his first one, right? Yep. Yep. We learned that when we 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 looked him up on the wheel. Yeah. Yeah, then then came the rock. He started to hone in his style. Yeah. And, uh, and you can tell this is get, very raw. This is like an indie film with a fifty million dollar budget. Right. <laughs> like they took in, a guy and said, "Go nuts." What What year was this? 96? Ninety six. Ninety nineteen ninety five. Ninety five. Yeah. Yeah. So this was like an eighty hundred million dollar budget in ninety five, which is like comparatively today, like a six hundred million dollar budget. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, giving somebody who at the time was an unknown commodity, and yeah. being like, "Look here, make, make make us make us some money," yeah, and it and it paid off. I mean, it, it definitely paid off. paid off. He was uh, he killed it. This movie was fun. I remember, I still distinctly remember seeing it in theaters. How much I enjoyed it. How much we laughed at it. I mean, obviously the jokes are, you know, one of my notes is here that the jokes come from a very different time. You couldn't make those jokes these days, but yeah. Uh, the movie is still still holds up as far as the entertainment value and the excitement. See, like I, I think you can make the jokes these days as long as it's Martin Lawrence and Will Smith making the jokes these days. True, true. You can't put Schwarzenegger and Stallone, who were the original no. people that were yeah. um, approached to be in this movie. Can you imagine how different of a movie it would be? <laughs> this would have been wild if the, like, I could not imagine this movie. Being Stallone and Schwarzenegger, I guess you can argue that uh, Expendables is kind of what we would have seen um, if they were one to this movie. But like Michael Bay wanted the back and forth, the camaraderie between this, the two, and like I feel like honestly, I feel like it Stallone, would have turned like, out more like Tango and Cash. Yeah, yeah. Then because like Tango and Cash ultimately is kind of bad boys. That's kind of true, I guess. I feel like yeah, it probably would have focused Which on Stallone. like fight scenes. You know, you would have it would have been yeah. more examples of how strong the two of them are. I'm sure one of the jokes would have been the two of them trying to outdo each other. Yeah, basically, yeah, it would yeah, be, yeah. it'd be like you know the new Fast and Furious movies. You know, we would have seen Stallone lift the car up with one hand and Schwarzenegger yeah, maybe pull out another phone booth and just throw it down a hill, like maybe <laughs> who knows? Like, who knows? Commando. I, I, like, I like, like in Commando. You know what I mean? Yeah, this would have been like a complete another like. I think they got the right guys for the job. To be honest, one hundred percent. What's I funny can't... is before this came out, I never saw Martin Lawrence in an action movie. I kind of was like, you know, that's a weird well, choice. He was, he was a stand-up comic, right? He wasn't he, he wasn't he, doing? He, doesn't, he didn't look like it though. Like I didn't think that he could pull off like being able to punch somebody or. or was he doing Martin yet? Uh, Martin sure, was on, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Martin was the nineties, early nineties. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, so Martin was on. Will Smith was the Fresh Prince. Yeah, but I guess he kind of always had a look about him that he could be the sort of like action star. I just feel like Martin Lawrence always seemed kind of like a nerdy comedian, but, even though that's not really what his style was. What's really interesting is this was a time in Hollywood where you had TV actors mm-hmm. and you had movie stars. Yes. And yeah. never the two shall cross. Mm-hmm. Like Clooney was one, but there was very, very few people that made it out of TV and made it to the big screen. And in Michael Bay's directorial debut, they took two TV stars right. and said, and This is unheard of. This is unprecedented for the time. But you know what? That just kind of shows to show you how cheap uh, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith were at the time. Because yeah. to your point before, it feels like an indie movie. 
And it you does. got a, you had a director who, you know, you didn't know he was going to make you some money or, or be able to put something together on screen. So they gave him this probably small budget. And he said, all right, let's find two people who have chemistry, but are not Arnold Schwarzenegger and friggin' Sylvester Stallone. And uh, I mean, they knocked it out of the park. Starting with the opening scene, I mean, immediately, even me watching it now, I was popping my head. And the first note I wrote that right off the bat, the music is amazing. Wow. The budget on this movie was $19 million. I feel like that's even high considering it came out in 95. No, bro. You, like $19 million is nothing. Yeah. I mean, now a cheap movie is like $70 million to $100 million. <laughs> yeah. Like, but it makes sense though because Michael Bay is big on the practical effects. True, you know, there's very if there's very little if if any CG. I mean, I'm sure there's some CG with the explosions, but you don't I don't think there it. is. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think there is because I love to do explosions. Uh, this is mostly practical. before CG, also. Well, yeah, CG. I mean, Jurassic Park was already out. CG is starting to yeah, it was like be Jurassic thing, Park but... was like it was half puppets, <laughs> half yeah, CG. It wasn't all CG, not like it is today. No, not like it is today, but like even that and that that probably had a budget of I mean it was a Spielberg thing, you know. Yeah. They were they gave Spielberg the Brink truck and just said, Go go ahead, yeah. Steven. Just make us make us whatever you spend, make it back <laughs> tenfold. And he said, Yeah, I can't yeah. Gotcha. He goes, Do you want to see dinosaurs be real? <laughs> yeah. I think uh so the opening scene, right? We start off with Martin Lawrence and Will Smith in the fancy car. In the Porsche. Well, I guess that's not that's not the opening scene, but it's close enough. Um, yeah, we see we see the, the I'm sorry. Let's go to the opening opening scene. We see the the precinct break in first, right? Right away, you know, we got we got our foreign bad guy. You, you, you know, that's already problematic now. Um, he shoots what well, looks like a cop anyway, uh, and then they steal cocaine. So already two out of three things people would I be like, it was heroin. Oh. Isn't it heroin? Is it heroin? I don't know. See, I'm, I'm not. I don't, I don't even you, remember. You would recognize the drugs better than me because of your <laughs> profession. I, I don't. It's a white brick. A white, uh, it's a brick of white powder. So to me, yeah. it's cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. So it's... No, it, I mean it probably was cocaine. Who, yeah. who, like, and it's some some absurd number. It's, I feel like it's... it had to be cocaine because, like, back then, like that was always the drug that every dealer was doing. Yeah, I mean it's also you know? Miami. So like, yeah, 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 Miami is the cocaine cowboys. But like, uh, like it was, and it was some absurd number, like a hundred and twenty million dollars worth of cocaine. Yeah, like it? just ridiculous. A, ridiculous. You know, a stack of amount. bricks of and cocaine. The heist that they pull off to steal this cocaine is the most absurd thing I've ever seen. I always laugh. This, you know, this is a common thing now. So they shot a cop, right? They made it look like they shot a cop. So the whole precinct empties out to go and I guess, um, cop this What's it called, uh, investigate this. And yeah. I always, I always shake my head. Cause I'm just like, like the entire precinct, nobody was <laughs> like, maybe some of us should hang back. Just well, they did. They, they left that one guy back. Remember? Yeah, they one, guy. <laughs> one guy. One <laughs> guy. They Although, gassed uh, him. You know, they act like it's so smart. Though. I feel like Michael Bay kind of planned that out, and then was like, "Oh, this is a genius heist." You know, no one ever. Well, about remember the movie. remember the best part about it is they actually didn't kill a cop. Right, they killed somebody it. dressed as a cop, yeah. only because yeah. then the whole force would be on their hands. Exactly. You know. Exactly. They made that point to tell us yeah. that. Once I At feel least like he's four times. <laughs> I feel like you know it's it's like the the police get there and they're like they fucking killed a cop. Are you kidding me? The whole force is like we're gonna kill. We're gonna we're gonna go nuts. We're going to war with with whoever stole this. Whatever. Someone was like, wait, wait, no, no, it's a costume. He he's not really a cop. And they were like, oh, thank God you told us that because I really would have went off. Like <laughs> we were really going in on this guy, but now let's just. No. Now they just send two cops. It's just it's usual, the whole guys. force. Yeah. It's yeah, the whole yeah. force. Let's just pick two cops that fight each other, <laughs> that argue with each other constantly. <laughs> and then we get to one of my one of my favorite openings or introductions for characters ever is the two of them in the car. Martin Lawrence is eating food, and Will Smith is just annoyed that he's eating food in his car. They get hijacked by freaking what's his name? Triggs? Trigg yeah, from Trigg Sons of Anarchy. From Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> and the two of them just argue their way. It's literally like taking two Axel Foley's and just having them argue with each yeah. other to distract somebody. That had to be a big influence, right? Beverly Hills Cop. hundred percent. Had 100%. to be a huge influence for them. Especially with Martin Lawrence's character. It had to yeah. be. Because he just goes off on these tangents, and that's exactly what Axel Foley used to do. Yeah. But we get our first, again, opening scene, Martin Lawrence is complaining that he's always got to fight the big motherfuckers. He, he knocks the guy out, too, in one punch, and I was like, okay, he could do this. All right, I'm, I'm in. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, like, 
like you said earlier, we didn't know if Martin Lawrence could be an action star. Right. And well, this picture, kind of proves you know, that he can. Fast forward to Lethal Weapon 4, where Chris Rock tried to do it, tried to basically do what Martin Lawrence did here. And, uh, you know, he was, was he funny? Sure, because he's a comedian. But did he pull off the action side of it? I, you mm. know, not really. It's not, not really. it's not as easy as just like, oh, they tell me to punch. Okay. Like, you need to look yeah. like you know what you're doing. You know, and Martin Lawrence clearly does because he went and had a career of action movies. Absolutely. So, I mean, the Michael Bay quick cuts every 12 seconds well, also helps. <laughs> th- that definitely helps for sure. That definitely <laughs> helps. Michael Bay, no, I mean, I'll give him credit. He does do the quick cuts, but he at least keeps the action like on screen long enough where you kind of just know what's happening. It's not yeah. like these other ones where they cut so much that you're kind of like, what the fuck? Like, you know, it's how did true. he land on the ground? You know, true. he, he, there's, there's a very old school way of shooting people shooting guns in this movie where yeah, you well, don't ever see more than the person that's shooting the gun on screen. Yeah. And it's just the camera's right in front of them. They're just like, bang, bang. Yeah. And then it cuts. You don't see anybody. Like, <laughs> well, in this movie, you do see a few people actually get shot. But for the yeah. most part, it's a lot of you hear the shots or you see the shots. Then you see the person reacting to getting shot. But you don't actually see. Again, that's a big difference between this one and the second one. Absolutely. You know, the, the, Absolutely. the way everyone handles a gun in this one looks very amateur or very like faking it. Yes. The way the, the action is shot is very kinetic and very like quick, quick cuts. And yeah. then in the second one, you see a lot of people get shot. You see bullets go through people in slow motion. You see, you know what I mean? The, like the world get shot. The second yeah. one, <laughs> like so, it's definitely uh, they get away with a lot more in the second one. But that's probably Absolutely. a lot of Michael Bay's like, influence because of how good and how entertaining. Well, he learned. He, he obviously learned from uh, you know, um, you know, becoming a seasoned vet, uh, you know, director after yeah. a few. After a few movies and everything like that, like he obviously picked up some tricks along the way because this is very like you could tell this is very like first movie. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, there's still some classic Michael Bay shots though. I mean, first of all, oh, there's that orange tint, right? We, we experienced yeah. it in yeah. uh, in the tri-state area a couple <laughs> weeks ago. Everything's just orange and smog. <laughs> Everything looked like bad boys. It was great. <laughs> right, everyone's sweating at all times. At all times, just at all times. Like, it's Miami for, for whatever reason. Everybody's sweating. Yeah. I will except say, uh, for, except for Will Smith, yeah, except for who's apparently the best looking guy in who's California. wearing a three piece suit everywhere he goes as an undercover cop, which is amazing, right. or a tight muscle shirt. Yeah, you know they never look like cops ever. Not once yeah. in this movie do look like cops. Besides the fact that they have a badge and a gun. <laughs> like, he, I will say the one of my one of the notes I wrote down here too. One of the first things is uh, the chemistry between Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, like. Just immediately in that first conversation about when Martin Lawrence eating the fries, the chemistry yeah. between the two of them is off the charts. I mean, they yeah, really nailed it out of the park with these two. It's 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 like the roles were meant for these two guys. Hundred percent. Like they they vibe with each other perfectly. Like the chemistry is there. You believe that they're partners. You believe that these two guys would be like bickering nonstop with each non-stop. other. Again, um, like, can you imagine if it was anyone else? I mean, I know they started by going with Stallone and, and Schwarzenegger, but they wanted other people. They didn't want Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. And Michael yeah. Bay was like, nah, nah, I'm just going to take care of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and it was the it was the right move. I can't picture this franchise having any two other people in it. Like, How uh, accurate is the precinct scenes? <laughs> <Not at> all. <laughs> You know, again, it's it's the stereotypical like they walk into the precinct and the captain is just screaming at them right off the bat. Joe Manganiello. No, no, not, no, no, no. What's his name? No, uh, Joe Pantalone. Joey Pants. Yeah, Joey, Joey Pants. Pants. <laughs> Pantaleone is that his name? Pantaleone. Yeah. yeah, he is by far my favorite character in the Bad Boys franchise like of all time. The, the screaming captain never got better than his character. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Like, my favorite I, I scene is just like eh, everyone compares is, to him. My favorite scene in this movie with him, because we'll get to Bad Boys Two when we get to Bad Boys mm-hmm. Two, because he has the best line in that entire movie. I, I love Bad Boys Two, but in this movie, when he's shooting the basketballs around <laughs> and doesn't make a single shot the entire time, and he's just like, "You guys gotta find everybody," and he's shooting, missing. <laughs> he's like, "We got two hundred million dollars of drugs on the street. Yeah. People are gonna start." We need you guys out there. I A's up my ass and he's shooting. And yeah. missing. <laughs> I just love the when he's like, they were all going in before you two <laughs> before you guys got here. I was making them all before you guys got here. 
it's just funny, man. Because like, I, I die because they they when they walk in, they don't even know that there is a heist. They don't know that no. anything happened, and he's screaming at them immediately. 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 I like also, you know, they have the the patented just Spanish duo that's in the movie. Yes, just, just to spit racist jokes at each other. I mean, that's literally <laughs> the only reason they're there. The only reason they're they there. don't. I mean, I know they help out later on in the movie, but they don't really serve any other purpose. You could have had any other two cops be there, but they yeah. had to be two Spanish guys, and them and Martin Lawrence and Will Smith had to yeah, you had just to go have at each two, other. That's the it. two black cops, the two Spanish cops, just constantly at each other's throats. That's the Michael Bay. That's the that's the, yeah. his little touch on it. Like a hundred. No, don't worry, no, everyone's gonna love this. And we, you know what, we did at the time. We did. <laughs> I mean the racism, you know. So they explain the convoluted, like unnecessary heist. Yeah, that thing. was that was instance one of us being told that they didn't shoot a real cop because they'd have the whole force on their hands. Yes, and then they figure out that they came in through the the newly installed air duct, right? That was big enough to fit twelve humans and a hundred million dollars worth of cocaine through. <laughs> yeah, that led right to the access point of. A van in giant duffel <laughs> bags, and also on. Well, I guess they had a pulley system to pull the bags, but I mean, again, nobody thought to themselves, "Is this a liability for our evidence locker?" <laughs> no, not no. once. Yeah, you know, it wasn't until that moment that anyone thought that could happen. You know, again, in this movie, the air ducts though were big enough for people to crawl through, a la Die Hard. Crawl cause... through with a sled and a pulley yeah. system yeah. that would rocket them. That was my favorite, like the, the up with close shots of them. I mean, like. <laughs> like it was, yeah. it's not like they were tight and like you had to, you know, they had to keep their arms and legs, and there was no one telling you keep your arms inside the car at all times. They just basically <laughs> put their hands up and rode the wave. You know? It's so true. It's so true. But we get um after that, they're investigating. They start investigating. Will Smith goes to his escort girlfriend friend yep. Max. Yeah. Who's working out at a boxing gym. For really, the only reason for her to be working out at the boxing gym is just that Martin Lawrence could have a, his little moment with the, with the uh, speed bag and the weights. Yeah, she could have been at any other gym, but for whatever any, reason, that's what <laughs> any other gym. But they're there. Uh, he tells her to keep a, he, an ear out on the streets for him. Classic cop move. Apparently. Classic cop move, right? For the cops back then, you always went to civilians and asked them to put their necks on the line. For well, you always got a CI, right? Like, like they had have, they have Michael Imperioli as the yeah. CI also. I didn't realize how much yeah. of this was like basically a classic uh, Sopranos reunion before the Sopranos yeah. was over. I know Joey you know? Pants, Michael yeah. Imperioli. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they continue and they continue on until, you know, following the investigation along, Max hears about some big time new roller on the street who's looking for girls brings her friend um very professional that? every everyone here is very professional because tay leone is the is the girl yeah and max is <laughs> who's boss. not a hooker right max's <laughs> boss goes oh wait your friend's here yeah she's a good looking bringer and it's yeah. like she's not a working girl so what <laughs> like, okay like and she like, agrees she's gonna get there and be like hey listen should just blow this guy yeah two grand <laughs> but she like, agrees. What? Like literally, the whole movie happens because her friend agrees to whore out for a night. That's basically yeah. what happens. Yeah. Like, well, she doesn't know it's whoring out either. Remember, she just thinks they're going to a party. True. True. That's right. right. They think they're going to. A party. She was going to spring it on her at the at the party. Like, hey, listen. By the way, we got to fuck these guys. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. This is a uh, this is what sets the plot in motion. Honestly, absolutely. Because if she doesn't go to that party, Max gets killed. There's no more evidence whatsoever. Yeah, the basically. drugs get sold and that's it. Basically, Martin yeah. Lawrence and Will Smith get fired, and for some reason, internal internal affairs blames them, even though there's, they all have to have alibis for what happened during the heist. I mean, they were you getting know. carjacked, right? But the entire movie, internal affairs is after them specifically. It's not personal, apparently, but them specifically because of Who what else they, could it their be? involvement. I guess I, yeah, I it make it does make perfect sense though because. If you were internal affairs, what makes more sense that the, there's two dirty cops or that a, a squadron of <laughs> thieves on jet powered police system sleds <laughs> came in through your air ducts and stole two hundred I mean, million dollars worth of cocaine? In Michael Bay's world, it makes more sense that your two best cops, <laughs> the ones who caught the who 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 found, found the, the cocaine the first time, yes. Or the then then decided, nah, you know, we already got enough credit for that. We're gonna steal it back, and then we're gonna sell it. We get um, our sense. first slow motion death scene with Max. Yes, <laughs> our first of 
many, many, classic, many classic Michael Bay, uh, Michael Bay, uh, Michael Bayism. Yeah, you know the slow motion the, shot, the slow motion death scene where the gun just goes off and you don't see a squib, you don't see no. anything, no. you just see her go, oh, and then very, fall. very melodramatic, like soap opera, like oh. <laughs> very. Very melodramatic. But at least proper. you know we find out that our killer is smart enough to use a pillow to muffle the yeah. sound. Yeah, so which which will here. kind of work if you press the gun up to the pillow. But when you're just holding the pillow, that cracks me up out in front of you, and then bring the gun up next to it, it doesn't. No, do it. Th- that cracks me up because I always thought that too. Like, is that really going to suppress it when you see the whole pillow in slow motion just like flap with the shot? <laughs> So I'm like, that didn't suppress anything. Like, didn't do anything. You know, if Not maybe he put the nozzle like inside the pillow, like he unzipped it and did it. I, maybe I could see it, but either way, she dies. Taya Leone, who plays her her best friend, th- who came to the party with her, sees it, but she happened to go to the bathroom. Now she's running away, and we get our another big slow motion shot where she jumps off the roof of the Al Capone suite because they made sure to let us know five or six times it was the, the Al Capone, Capone suite, suite. <laughs> um, into a pool. And the bad guys go, oh, man, she jumped. I guess we're just going to give up the search, <laughs> which, which I remember being like, she's she's got to swim out of the pool. Like You can run back down. <laughs> you guys can still shoot her, her like, from up here. <laughs> right. Like, you know, you have the guns. I, you know, I'm not rooting for the bad guys, but I'm like, e- I will know. say that the, the bad guys on this dude's team, because you have like skinny Italian guy, one fat Italian guy, two yeah. grease ball guy with a shotgun, three. Right. They oh, are the third guy, yeah. They are the most inept idiots. <laughs> and they're um, fighting, but I love that they're fighting with each other as much as Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. Are yes, fighting each other. I, I, I do. I do such enjoy minor that. characters, but have so much, so much like character in them. You know what I mean? Like I want, like I would love to watch a sitcom with the two of them before this, like a prequel, <laughs> and just see the two of them working together, just bickering at all times. You know? Come on, you fat fuck! You couldn't yeah. go and get him. Yeah. I'll bust your fucking head. He's going like I'm a couple with, they they just unleashed firepower on a crowded Miami street. Right. And they're sitting there arguing. There's <laughs> never any um urgency with the criminals. They get into these right. gunfights. There's they're you know, no one's trying to hide anything. They're just outward just like trying to kill people. And then when they don't, they're yelling at each other. And someone's like, yeah, we probably should go. And there's like, yeah, fuck you, you piece of shit. And I'm like, <laughs> don't make me come over there and crack your head. That's one of the best <laughs> lines. Yeah. You fat fuck is yelling at him. I'm like. So now we find out from Julie that Max told her the only person that she would ever go to for help is Mike Lowry. Mike Lowry. Mike for whatever wow but, but before we get to that because before we see that we see Martin Lawrence and Will Smith in uh, during the investigation get to the um, one person's house who I think did the blueprints for the ductwork and that person's yes. dead so we see now the cops show up no one answers they just let themselves in you know very standard police police procedure well they, they did the thing they did, do you hear know, that well you know so oh, the, the door opened <laughs> the note i have here though is like they put on this whole show of like leaning into the door and it just pops open and they're like oh my god it just i fell and it just opened and i thought to myself like who are they doing that for there's no cameras like there's there's no one around you could just tell them that you just leaned on the door and it opened you didn't have to like physically act it out you know but they're trying to one up each other on the acting yeah um, you know because then afterwards we get the the classic and this was in the trailer uh, martin lawrence saying no your voice sounds too black you gotta you gotta sound like them can we have borrow some brown sugar like <laughs> Very classic Martin Lawrence there. <laughs> but the note, the other note that I have here, which really is a running joke in the whole series, which I've just always makes me laugh, is Martin Lawrence's character getting nauseous and, and throwing up from being around a dead body. It's such a, every such time. a silly, stupid like quirk of his character, but it makes me laugh every, every time. time. His, every time. The way he acts where he's just gagging, like it just <laughs> he sells it so well and it cracks me up every single time. Especially when you know Mike moves the guy's hand and it falls down, and he's like, "Damn, careful where you're throwing a dead guy!" Like you know, it's just. Like, it's just I love it. I love it so much. Oh, it's so great. So and then from uh, there is when we get to, for um, Will Smith goes. Oh no! First, they're now they're investigating Will, the killing. Yeah, Will, Will Smith Alcohol goes to the well. Mil, Will Smith goes to the madam. Was he this goes to investigate Max's or after the Al Capone suite. 
This is after the Al Capone suite. No, I mean before the cops get to the Al Capone suite. I'm this is the order of operations here. No, they, they get to the Al Capone suite. He sees it's Max. Okay. And right, that's what I'm saying. So Will there, Smith goes to investigate the madam. Right. Martin Lawrence goes back to the precinct to, I guess, do paperwork. I, I mean, I don't I'm know assuming. what he was doing. I did think it was, it cracks me up though, watching it now. I, I obviously didn't catch this the first time I watched it, but it cracks me up watching it now that you, all we see is like a sea of forensic scientists scouring the scene for evidence. Right. They're marking things off. Everyone's looking at shit. And the only person who notices two shades of lipstick is Mike Lowry. That's he's, he's he's Mike Lowry. He's Mike Lowry. <laughs> right. I laugh when he lifts that up. And he's and the guy, if you ever watch, just watch that scene again with look at the scientist who's or the, the forensic scientist who's next to him. And he's looking at it and he goes, Looks like we've got two shades of lipstick. And that guy's face is just like, oh, like, <laughs> oh my God. How did we miss that? I'm just thinking, <laughs> like it's obvious. It's not even close. It's not even close. <laughs> not even close. Well, so now they know there's someone else, and that's where B- Mike Lowry, Will Smith's character, goes to talk to Max's boss. Yes, he's upset matter. because his friend died. You know, we don't know if there was a romance there or not. And he goes to talk to the boss, and he gets his ass whooped, not whooped. killed by Greaseball number three. By Greaseball number three, he doesn't get killed yep. for some reason. Greaseball number three decides. I'm well, you got to remember, if they kill a cop, then the whole force is on their ass. I see. Yeah, no, I missed. I forgot that. I forgot yeah. that little tidbit. They didn't remind me enough for me to realize because <laughs> I remember thinking, why didn't you kill him? You knock him through a freaking door. Now nah, he like, knew. He knew. Easy. You can't kill the cop, man. You're right. He knew he was a real cop. Until, until know, you're at the end. He does hear the sirens. And I guess that's the, the one of the reasons why he runs away. But, you know, you're right. If he killed the cop, movie the whole force is on minutes, their ass. would have been done. This is the same, like, <laughs> this is the same just, like, random-ass cop logic that we got from Fast and Furious 1. Yes. Yes, 100%. 100%. <laughs> like, we got to get out there. The truckers are arming themselves. Like, all right. Whatever you say. Yeah. Here, they're like, this the is the are arming themselves. We got to get yeah, there. Yeah. Like, you we- can't kill the cops because the whole force will be after you. We also find out that... um they only have four days to make the drop, or maybe we don't find out yet. But you know, in a in a few minutes, another couple scenes, yeah, we find we'll, out they have four we'll days. Find that out a little later it. on, a little later on, we find that out because now they've they've got the they're starting to piece things together. And I do right. I do like that out of out of all the other buddy cop movies that Bad Boys always felt a little bit more investigative. Yes, like that, like the movie, they're actually like learning following movies. leads. They're yeah. actually like it's almost like an episode of Law and Order mixed with a Michael Bay movie. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like they they follow the leads until the leads lead them somewhere, and then they finally like, all right, now we put it together, and then there's a giant action piece at the end. Yes, but they you don't, know? and it always feels pretty organic too. Like it doesn't feel like they happen to just fall over and land on a piece of paper that tells them the right address or the right info. Like they are yeah. asking the right questions and all that stuff. I, I agree with that. Yeah. I did like, so we get to the scene now that you were going to mention before where um, Max's ca- friend, I can't remember her name now. Julie. Like, Julie, where she calls the precinct, but she'll only talk to Mike Lowry. And what makes me laugh is that for whatever reason to start that scene, Michael Bay thought it was realistic for, Marcus Martin Lawrence's character to be making two phone calls at the exact same time. <laughs> one of them is with his wife, and then one of them was with you know someone else to unlock files, basically another, another a cop thing. And yeah. I remember thinking to myself, why not just make the first phone call, hang up, and then make call your wife? Like, yeah. why are you on the phone with both? And, and now she's getting distracted. It's the classic, you know. I think that I think the idea was like, that his wife called him, and he's already in enough trouble that he just picked it up, and he was just like, "Baby, that's, I'll be home soon." But that's another question, though, like. She knows who she married. She knows what his job is. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. If, but you know, I mean, like they're going through shit. You know what I'm saying? It makes sense. Yeah, they go most, through shit. But like, he can't cops, be like, look, like I have four days, or I'm going to get fired. She's not going to be like, all right, you know what? I'll, I'll back off for four days, and then we're going to fight about this. Yeah. Like, you know, but he, I mean, he's not getting any quality time at home for whatever reason. Just, yeah, but that's the thing. Is like, you know, they're having marital issues. Most cops do. I mean, it, it is what it is. Yeah. You know, know. it's I the life is like, hard. The life is hard. It doesn't feel like this is this is a, an isolated incident with him. So it's like you knew who you married. You know what I mean? I will say that the next part coming up is the most absurd part of this entire movie. Which that is, they had to keep the charade going 
it's the part of the movie I hate. I I don't like the least. Well, like, first, bef- before we even get to that, the one thing that always makes me laugh when someone's on the phone in movies, I love how I could, there could be on the phone, right, and I'm talking to you, say, and then someone's right here, like literally their yeah. face is over my shoulder, yeah, yeah. and I can just go, I'm on the phone and start talking, and now that I did this, you can't hear anything that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always like, she can hear you. When, when the captain's going, no, that's not, doesn't sound like Mike. Be sexier. I'm like, she can hear that. You're not whispering. <laughs> like, you think you're being quiet? Like, but no, it's a movie, right? So she can't hear it. And then we get to, we get to this, this next moment now, which you were just going to, where, where Martin Lawrence pretends to be Will Smith playing Mike Lowry. And because she, Mike Lowry is the only one she'll talk to. Again, and standard police procedure. And that's standard let's not tell her procedure. the truth. Let's Which I mean, I can understand. Things. I can understand not telling her the truth on the phone, right? Yes. I mean, mm-hmm. Yeah. This is my Lowry. And him going to get her. Okay. Him fine. going to like, get her. You want to get her? But at, at her some point, you can just turn around and be like, "Listen, I'm not Mike Lowry. This is Mike Lowry. Right. I'm his partner. Here's right. our IDs. We right. needed to bring you in. We're and sorry explain, we lied to you. Right. Especially, you know, he brings her to Mike Lowry's apartment because that's where she'll be <laughs> she'll safe, not in protective custody. And there's pictures of Mike Lowry all over the place. Which let me ask you a question: How many pictures of yourself do you have in your house? Just, hanging, like, just on the shelves. I might have two. Right. I think I have. I have one over here with me and my brother, my wife and I, and for yeah, our wedding. I, Otherwise, I don't think there's another. I, think I got me, me and my grandpa, and like me and my parents and my right. brothers. <laughs> like right. Even back then, even before smartphones existed. Nobody just had pictures of themselves. Just and he's single. It's not like he had a family and he's well, pictures of his family. He's Mike Lowry, though. Right. He he needs to have surround himself with himself yeah. in order yeah. to understand how important yeah. he is. Exactly. Like, that. But again, and I and to your point though about keeping this charade up, I was laughing to myself because I'm like, all right, you you brought her to Mike Lowry's house. First of all, you told her to wait outside so you can go talk to the doorman. So that's like a red flag immediately. It's like, why can't I just walk in? Yeah. Secondly, he's already skittish as it is. Right. Like she should not believe this guy. 100%. Secondly, you walk in and you're tripping over everything around the house, which made which th- there's two problems with that. One, you don't know where they, the lights You guys are. are brothers, right? You guys have been you've been together basically since high school according to the your own movie. You haven't been to his house? Like you don't like know the layout of his place? Like I know my friend's houses. Like if you, if my friend let me into his house, I could walk around. <laughs> well, there, it was dark. It was dark. All right, but he doesn't even know where the light switch is. You're telling me he never walked in and had to turn the light on? Like, it's just weird to me, you know? And the way he's acting, like, oh, man, I'm getting confused on my own shit. (laughs) At what point does she go, yeah, you know, you're clearly not Mike Lowry. Like, (laughs) obviously, it's not right. Who are you? And then she sees all the pictures. And he tells her the story about, like, oh, it's a picture for every time he saved my life. (laughs) And she's like, oh, all right, yeah, no problem. That's a plausible reason for you to have 100 pictures (laughs) of this weird guy. (laughs) You know? And then we get the like I, I I understand they were doing it for comedic effect having Will Smith's character stay at Marcus's house with his wife yeah. and then Marcus starts getting freaked out because he thinks that he's gonna bang his wife and everything like that and they're you know they're doing all this extra and and it made some first some comedic moments and everything yeah, like that funny stuff but it's a subplot that just didn't need to happen and they could have right. just been like. You know, the, it was a very like sitcom esque subplot. Well, this, this is movie. classic Michael Bay, though. Like the movies always run long, and there's always because there's like that one little B plot that really just doesn't need to be there. Yeah, and that yeah. was it. You know, and at least I will say I give it credit though. At least um, Will Smith's character says to him like, "I've been your partner for whatever it is, seven years, whatever it is. I've been your boy my whole life." Like for you to even think that is nuts. Like, yeah. there's no reason. Like you know, yeah. But, but it, it seemed like a very like, like I don't know, perfect sitcom, strangers. Sitcom is the way sitcom. is really the right yeah. way to say it. it's a sitcom yeah. storyline. Even it's the whole sitcom. scene where Marcus calls and then Will Smith has the phone, but you hear his wife going, "Oh, put it back in." Yeah, and like, you know the double entendre. Marcus is like, "What?" Like I'm like, "Okay, come on," you know. And then he handcuffs Julie to the car while he goes to break <laughs> into his own house, like. Just it's there are funny moments, but it's fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 stupid. It's unnecessary. It didn't need to be in this movie. Easily could have cut that entire thing out. Like I said, just turn around. Like once Will Smith reappears with this concussion, just explain right. everything to her. Be like, listen, we didn't want you to run. You're our only witness. Right. You're the only way to get Max. This is the real Mike Lowry. This is his partner Marcus. We're sorry that we lied to you, but we need you to do this right. for us. You're safe. We're you know we we're here. Like we're here. We're safe. Like whatever. 
Which brings us to they start looking at mug, mug shots. And I always, again, I roll my eyes a little bit because why are they sitting in the complete dark looking at mug shots? The only lights are coming from the computer. Yeah. They're, wow. they're in his house. Like, why don't turn the lights mood, on? Mood lighting, Chris. It's yeah, a Michael Bay movie. <laughs> you know, she gives him shit because he's eating a sandwich and she's a I'm surprised there wasn't candles lit everywhere. I know flying right through though. the airs. And like a slow motion shot where the camera just pans around the entire computer and then for over and over again for zero reason. You know, I did like one line that always made me laugh was when Marcus says, I got married so I could stop lying. I'm yeah. like, That's a weird reason to get married. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, how much were you lying before? Yeah, like, what were you like, doing before, bud? You know? Like, but it's also like, you know, he's not lying now because he's trying to be deceitful of his wife. He's lying for his job. To yeah, he could have also stuff. told his wife the truth. The That's the other time. thing I thought of. It's like, I and I guess I can see he doesn't want to tell her the truth because if the bad guys somehow figure out where he lives, they get her, they can say, where is he? And she, well, remember, they him. saw the they saw the license plate on his station wagon. Right. So I guess I get not wanting to tell her to kind of keep her safe in that respect. But at the same time, it's like, you know, it should be understood that you're not lying because you're trying but, to be with this woman. You're lying see, like, because you're trying to keep her safe. But see, like that's that it's the exact opposite for me. Because like if if I'm him and I know that they got my license plate, I'm like, hey Cap, you gotta get my wife and kids out of yeah. the fucking house, well, I put them in that. protective yeah. custody, and they you know, the, the force goes in and pulls them and puts them in protective custody. Yeah. He's like, Listen, this is what's going on. Your your husband is is with a key witness, blah blah right. blah blah. And you don't need that entire subplot. Right. Like instead, they send Mike Lowry alone to protect his <laughs> wife, and the captain's in on it. He knows. Yeah, he knows. He's aware. He's just like he's just like, yeah, just keep. We'll just keep breaking protocol this way, yeah. guys. And they'll not and they that have we don't have a Spanish house somewhere. Just watching the house. Yeah. So Mike Lowry's in the house because one guy is all you need, and then they're watching the house in case you know one side of the house because it's not like they're in separate cars or like that. They're standing on one side of the house. The entire other side is just you know you can do you can sneak in wherever you want, but. That always made me laugh, though. Just, just the whole like, oh, I got married to stop lying. Because I was just like, damn, how much were you lying before him? That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> but so then we get, then, then we get another uh, fantastic scene where after I think is this after the shootout at the club where they go get the to like the, the the bodega. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that. yeah, I believe so. I think it's so they get they go to the club after the mug shots. They they see where the you know henchman number three is. Julie decides that she's going to go too because you know why would she make a smart decision? <laughs> and you know Mike Mike uh, Will Smith's character gets distracted by the hot women. Mar Lawrence gets into a fight in a bathroom, which is actually pretty funny and pretty yes. cool fight, you know. Which leads into a chase scene. Which now this whole sequence is pretty intense. You know, it's pretty good. It's, it is. You know, the fact that they, that we know that they stole a kerosene, a truck full of kerosene, even though they don't know that, and then they kind of figure it out. Oh, I'm like, then yeah, that's a, just just a phenomenal twist. You know, then we get the the news the news chopper chopper just you know instead of hiding they stand there and yell at the news chopper because <laughs> you know why would cops who want to be undercover actually try to act like they want to be undercover? <laughs> you know, I know this is what the, the like the ninth fucking shootout and chasing that we've gotten in this movie so yeah. far, and only now is the, are the reporters in Cal in L.A. Yeah. getting getting to the scene at a reasonable time, you know. <laughs> But from there we get now. This is like really the best. This is clearly the the peak of the movie. This is the best part of the movie. We get Mar- Martin Lawrence's wife shows up to Mike Lowry's apartment to basically confront him and be like, "You're a lying piece of shit. Don't come home." We get Julie finally just calling him out on the fact that they're, they're clearly lying to her. And again, though, instead of staying with Mike Lowry, who she's been saying the whole time is the only person she trusts, she decides, she "Okay, I'm gonna leave now." She's just gonna leave. She, yeah. just, she wants to go. And then we get. The chasing of all chasings. The bad guys show up. They take um, Taya Leone's character, Martin Lawrence, or no, Will Smith chases him on foot. So this always made me laugh. Like, w- where were the bad guys going? Let me ask you this question. Watching the chase scene, they they get in the car way ahead of Will Smith, right? Because he's hiding from the gunfire. They take off. They do a U turn, I guess. They just kind of go around the block and come back, and then get into an accident, and they're right in front of the building. Because when he comes out, they're still there. They yeah. haven't gone anywhere. I don't, I don't, I don't so understand. Then they're running. They run through building after building. Oh, so there's a model photo shoot, a freaking hair salon. Like they yes. Just, they book it. And then somehow Martin Lawrence steps out of the hotel or the apartment building that Mark, Mike, um, Will Smith's character lives. And he's like a block away. <laughs> like, like they just didn't go anywhere. Like I'm just like, what? not only well, that, he jumps see, on the cab. That see, they what you were into. distracted by was Michael Bay's shaky cam. 
<laughs> made everything look like it was happening way faster than it really was. Like the real radius of this entire chase scene. And it's a great chase scene. I mean, it's, it's a intense. two block radius. It's a two block radius. Will Smith is running <laughs> with his shirt open. Like it's slow motion. You know, he's glistening for once because he's actually working out. Martin Lawrence is on top of a car. You know what I mean? He, he falls off. He's about to get hit by the car. And Will Smith on foot gets there in time to push him out of the way. I mean, it's an intense scene. But the whole thing happens within like a two to three block radius. Yeah. And I, all I keep thinking is where are the ba- – just drive straight. <laughs> just drive in a straight line. They didn't you have the budget for it. Away. They didn't have the budget for it. I mean, $19 20, million. Dollars, Chris, that's all they had. You know what I mean? But like, Jesus, like when you really stop and think about it, as cool as the scene is, and this is, I guess, kind of a, a, a staple of Michael Bay in general, if you really stop and dissect the scenes, none of them make sense. No, they never like, make They really sense. just don't. <laughs> it never makes sense. But it was a classic line, a classic it, scene, you know. But it looks great. Motion, but it, yeah, and that's that's what he's good at, right? Is the that visual he, style is fantastic. The visual style is fantastic. Like you can't knock his visual style of everything. It's just none of it ever. Fu- when you when you really sit down and break this shit down, it doesn't make any sense. No, no. From there, we get Julie's now captured, so they lost their only witness, and we finally find the big bombshell is that. The, the guy who stole the drugs and, and brought, brought it to the Al Capone suite used to be a cop and was dating the secretary who's basically been trying to break into some files for Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, Mike and Marcus. And uh, they realize that she's been not breaking into it. Or she's unable to break into it on purpose because she's trying to protect yeah. herself. Well, they found so, out by the tactical sty- stylings of John Sally. Yeah, right. Lakers legend, John great, Sally. One of the best cameos one of, of like, any movie. Cameos. He plays the character well. It's <laughs> it's funny how like Marcus, like you know, he gets up and he just towers over Martin Lawrence, and he's like, "Get the fuck out!" Like, I will <laughs> knock you the fuck down. You know, it's just so it's so funny. But so now they get the information they need. They know where the drugs are immediately, and uh, they plan their final their final attack. It's they don't have enough time for backup, so it's my, Will Smith and Martin Lawrence's characters for some reason. The two Spanish cops, the SWAT team can't join them. No, yeah, no, because no one really can get there in time. Apparently, we're we're talking about like cops who can get to any location within minutes. No one can get there in time, and they. Decided, I don't know if you know how SWAT teams work. I don't. But I don't. <laughs> they sit around besides waiting. the movie SWAT. <laughs> besides yeah, the movie SWAT, they sit right. around waiting for moments like this yes. where they're like, "Hey, guys." We need to be here now. They're like, all right, load up, SWAT team, go. You're like, right. I forgot and, about that because in the movie SWAT, they're all just out with their families, living their day. Yeah. Their beeper goes off and they leave. They yeah. get there right away. But no, SWAT can't get there. SWAT can't get there. So they decide the four crew. We're gonna we're gonna take this garbage truck. We're gonna drive into this army of <laughs> drug dealers, and in a warehouse that's f- very explosive for whatever reason. There's just <laughs> giant containers of flammable gas everywhere. And we're going to just shoot up the place because we're not going to try to arrest anybody. We're just going to kill them all. And that's what they do. And honestly, it's Michael Bay, man. It's a fun, it's a fun set piece. It's a, I mean, listen, it's, a, it's a great set piece, an absolutely amazing set piece. I'm trying to find the, uh, the bad guy's name. I don't even know if we ever got it. It was, um, I don't know if we got it either, but I'm sure it's on IMDb. That's what I'm looking at here. Eddie Dominguez was the crooked cop. Right. Oh, Fusho. 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 Oh, um, we, you know, we did skip over uh, when they went back to JoJo. Oh, yeah. We forgot that. It's like another, right. another classic scene. Michael Imperioli's character. Right. And they just slap him around until, like, right. give Smith to me. Torches him, basically, for information. <laughs> yeah. And he gets it, and it works. No one gets in trouble from this, because, you know, why would they? But yeah, so we get the final fights, the final action scene, and it really is just it's just a fun action scene. We get we get one liners, you get big explosions, you know, you can kind of you kind of know where everything is, you know the layout of the warehouse, like the way he shoots it. Yeah, you know, and then you get it ends with a, an intense car chase, Absolutely. which is one of my favorite moments ever. Is when Marcus is saying the Miranda rights, and Will Smith's like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And he just says, "I'm getting it out of the way." Like it's just such a badass line, yeah. and he delivers it so well. You know. It is good. I mean, like, listen when they, when they get to that final that final set piece, they're so good in this moment of just being being over the top, cool. Yes, uh, right. cool is like clearly like, one, of, one of the notes Michael Bay got was like, "I don't care what you do with the movie, just make it cool." 
It's just make it That's cool. It. Just make he, it cool. He took that and ran with it. Fusho at this point has has bought himself a small army. Yeah. Oh. That we didn't see the whole movie. I mean, we always saw were scientists and three henchmen. Yeah, that was it. The three henchmen and the scientists, and that's it. And now all of a sudden he has what seventy five fully well, armed between with... him and the cartel guys. Army. Yeah, like they were there too, but like it grew from three henchmen to a warehouse full, a hundred <laughs> deep of just and people they kill with guns all of ready them. to go. And then there's no no hesitation. The moment the co- <laughs> the the garbage truck pulls in. They start shooting. That's it. Everyone just starts shooting. They have the same four people. Five people, I guess, if you count Max's uh, friend. Yeah, well, th- I mean, luckily there was enough explosive barrels well, around the entire where they can set off, you know. Right. You know, those explosions, I mean, they're going to be a distraction to the to the army guys. This is this is classic to, you know, movie magic where if you shoot a tank, it doesn't just like, you know, leak. It fucking explodes every in time. A ball of fucking every fire. time. I mean, the biggest explosion. They blow up an airplane with it. <laughs> like you know, at one point, someone shoots a, a briefcase and just money goes flying everywhere. Drugs are flying everywhere. Money's yeah. flying everywhere. There's no evidence for like to be saved. We're just killing everybody. Like they basically got a license to kill from the captain, which isn't real. And <laughs> we do get. Excuse me. This this classic scene with with them walking out of the car and basically you know yelling at a uh, Fuse or whatever his name is to stop running. This is, it was. I mean, listen, it's a good ending, dude. It's a it's a definitely it's a, it's a fantastic kind of ending. ending. It's a fantastic ending. Like it's exactly the ending you wanted for this movie. Yes. Like, yeah. You don't you don't leave this movie feeling unsatisfied. No, you sure. don't. Not at all. Not at all. They tie and it all spawns it spawns two two sequels that one was is probably. One of the greatest action movies of all time. <laughs> so, so if watching it now, right? This is a uh, this yeah. is you know decades later. What would you rate to give this movie out of ten? Uh this one, it, it's I mean, it's a seven point eight. That's probably around. I would I was gonna say seven and a half. That's yeah. It's right just below. It. It's just below an eight for me. Like, I do feel like it gets a lower score though because we know. What comes next, and we I know mean, how good you, that one is. You might be a hundred percent right on that, right? And like I said, I can probably quote most of Bad Boys Two. I could do a review for Bad Boys Two right now. I could right. do a deep dive review, and right. I haven't watched it in a couple of months. No, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the same way. I've, I remember my brother and I seeing the sequel in theaters. We were amped for it. We loved it so much. We've watched it a million times on TV together. Yeah, you know, I've watched it. It's ever said every the Bad Boys one and two are the kind of movies where when I pull on Netflix, put on Netflix or HBO Max or whatever, and I see that they're like added for the month, I have to watch them immediately. Yeah, there's yeah. no. It's like okay, good. I'm stopping everything. I'm just gonna watch these two. It's like mindless popcorn movies, I guess. You know what I mean? But it's so yeah. good. But it's so, so seven good. and a half collectively, we'll say like a seven point six out of ten. Sure. That's Bad Boys. That's Bad that's Boys bad one. Boys. That's the first Michael Bay movie. <laughs> so while uh, we're, you know, we're, we're, before we end the episode. Let's pull up our little wheel here. Yeah, Let's see what we're screen for you. See what we're watching next here, bud. We got tons of movies, and we're gonna click. Let's see what's next. I'm excited. So far, so far, the wheel has really given us right. It's come through. Stellar. Oh come on! Uh, I thought I was gonna go to, to Die Hard. James Bond is good too. Now this is classic. This is now we going we going all the way. I feel like we should just start with the the original. Okay. The very first one, the which uh, I don't know which one that is. All James Bond movies. Dr. No. 1962. Dr. No. So we're going to have to find where that's streaming, and uh, we're going to deep dive that one. So for you James Bond fans... That's what we're doing next. James Bond, James Dr. Bond, no, Dr. Sean I'm, a, I'm a little excited. I, I don't know if I've actually ever watched Dr. No. Like, I'm sure I have. I I've seen do. most of I've seen most of the old Bond movies, but I don't know if uh, I, I remember Dr. No that well. I definitely I actually watched this somewhat recently because building up to Daniel Craig's final Bond movie, I decided I wanted to just watch them all. So I went through and, and watched every single one. So it'll actually be nice now that I've watched it once. To rewatch it with a different, more of a, clin- a critical eye, and, yeah, uh, I like figure it. it out. But this is 1962, so this is a big, this is this a big is, difference. We're going to a big, like, a we have time. to take that into account with our criteria too, right? 
uh, as best as we can. As best yeah. as we can. I want to watch it with more of like the how did it entertain me today kind of kind of feel to it. Yeah, and, I got you. You know, we'll see what's going there. So that's the Bad Boys Deep Dive. Keep an eye out for Dr. No. Like and subscribe and turn on the notifications so you can find out when we post these videos. We try to post every Tuesday as much as we can. We do have the Flash review coming very, very soon. So if you haven't seen it yet, go out and see it. Uh, don't forget, Extraction 2 came out. Evil Dead Rise came out. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny comes out this at the end of the month. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, what was the movie? Uh, the Machine. Uh, the Machine. Burt Kirshner. Burt Kreischer, um, yeah. Kreischer. His, Kreischer. His, his, movie, his movie came out. Right. So, you know. It's a lot. You got a lot. A lot, man. A lot. Like and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. <laughs> Love you guys.